after a long flight. Um, they all got over here and are pretty keen to get ready for the game. West Coast obviously is starting to hit back to some uh, some really good form and they got some good inclusions there. Their forward line's got another tall in, involved in Kennedy who's very important to them. And probably for the first time for a long time they've had, got their four-pronged um, forward attack. We've got a few plans that we can go to but hopefully to start with we can, we can knock them over one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's great to see Alan Tooby come back in too. Tooves is a... Uh, um, plays it really hard, plays the game fair and really hard and aggressive and I love his intensity at the game and we're looking for that from him again. Good to see you back here mate. Been a while. Good to have you back. Our ability as defenders to uh, create one-on-ones and win those one-on-ones um, is very, going to be very important. We've got a lot of options so we can go to Ben Reid to, to go back there, Nathan Brown and Chris Tarrant. So it'll be more Brownie and Taz Deep and then you, you and Two's probably. That way? Yeah. Yeah. So at some stage, you know how it works, mate, they'll rotate. Yeah, the, the support's been great, as you can see. They've they rocked up, and it's like a couple of bus loads rocked up, and, and here they are, and they're always uh, always great support over here. Cheers, dudes. Yeah, funny enough, we had a, a streaker on the field in the training field, which has never happened to me before, but uh, yeah. she had a kick with Ben Reid and then she uh, quickly got off the ground. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to have the, the best roommate out of the whole team, so Tyson Goldsack, he's a very reliable roommate to have. He doesn't snore or sleep talk or sleep walk, which is probably the main benefits, and he's a very, very funny bloke. I grew up down south in, on a farm in Western Australia, so um, I lived down there until I went to boarding school up in, in Perth. So I, all, all my family and friends growing up were all kind of West Australian. There'll be a, a few cousins and aunties and my grandma and a few extra Tuvies there. A few more than normal. Loss is, uh, is not the favourite thing for a footballer or a coach, um, but it's a reality. Uh, you don't win every game you play, and um, at 15 and 6 this year, we've had more wins than losses, but there's an argument to, uh, to say that we've learnt more from our losses than, than we have from our wins. 
Um, one thing that's really important is making sure you spend time together. We uh, came back on the red eye and you know, no one really wanted to be on the flight. I, I think everyone just wanted to be home and, and comfortable and recovering and rehabbing as much as they could. But that's, that's what uh, getting back quickly is all about. So the boys had Sunday to themselves. We come in Monday and we go through the review um, straight into a skill session which is all about sort of flushing out um, the body and making sure that we're as, as recovered as we possibly can be for the week. Perspective's a pretty important thing in life and in footy. Um, so we had some experienced players, you know, Darren Jolly, Nick Maxwell, um, sitting back and, and watching you know, you know, from afar, you know, basically on the TV, what had what had taken place. So it's important to get their perspective as much as as much as the guys on the ground. It's obviously a disappointing result. Um, the players are hurting. You can see the guys come in this morning and a lot of bowed heads and pretty disappointed. Straight after the game, you tend to leave the boys to their own devices and. You almost let guys feel sorry for themselves and feel disappointed because um, you want them to feel that pain of, of losing and not achieving what we want to. So I think that in the end that helps you turn it around quicker um, once you, you have that bit of a silk and feel sorry for yourself and, and move on. But um, we sort of thrashed it all out today and spoke about what worked and what didn't work and what we have to implement moving forward. It's been from starting the day uh, on a pretty low note. It's been a positive afternoon, the way we've turned it all around, and the guys have seen it's not all doom and gloom, and while we're a bit disappointed with the last two weeks, uh, we know what we have to do moving forward. There's plenty of people outside the club that would love to see you know, the club implode, that would love to see the team capitulate and just fall away altogether, but that's not gonna happen. It's not going to happen because of the, the quality of the people that we've got here. So, um, you know, we're realistic enough to understand that when you don't play well, then rightfully questions need to be answered about what you're capable of. And we haven't played well for the last couple of weeks. But three weeks ago we beat Sydney, who are top two side, and, and on the weekend only just got nutted by Hawthorne. So our best is good enough, and we understand that. But when we don't perform, we open ourselves up, and if we don't play together, we open ourselves up, and we're more than aware of that. September's got a different smell to it. It's got a different feel to it, um, and that's only a week away. This is what um, all the work goes in for, whether you're a player or a coach or a supporter. You know, this is everything you've invested goes into this part of the season and it doesn't come around all the time and all of the work that the boys have put in they deserve to get rewarded for but and that's it that, that makes it an exciting time because you know that you're going to get the chance to either succeed or fail and and get something back for everything that you've put in but we just need to make sure we narrow the focus and get that done and control what we can control and, and play our best footy. If we do that, well then, you know, how good are we going to feel? Ladies and gentlemen, Pies fans, welcome to quite possibly the biggest night on the Collingwood social calendar. It's Wiselet's 2012 for the Collingwood Foundation. Everyone's here, there's rock stars, movie stars, and of course, some of the Collingwood family. Let's go and take a look. Tonight we raise money on behalf of the wife through the Weisslitzers and through the Collingwood Foundation with all the money going to our charitable arm. So this isn't going to uh, anything to do with the football club. We make our own money over there. That's, that's what our members are for and our attendances and our sponsorships and the rest. But this has actually put something back into the community. Now Molly. I think that we can all assume that the Saints, the Saints aren't going to make the finals. No, they're not. Am I to assume that you will be barracking for Collingwood, that you will switch allegiances? No, you cannot do that at all. No, I'll always uh, barrack for St Kilda. Alex Wiselet's made special mention of you tonight and said that you were part of the inspiration behind him getting on board with this. Do you remember what you said and, and what, what the great words were? 
Alex is um, is obviously gets behind anything Collingwood. Um, the night he's put on tonight is amazing. So um, anything he can do to help the club and anything we can do to promote anything good in society is, is obviously a positive and, and looks positive upon the club. So um, Alex is a great man and I'm sure the chicks would like the special mention I got there. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Delta, firstly, thank you for joining me. Oh, no, no problem at all. Thank now, we, uh, we had uh, one of my teammates up on stage. What did you think of his dance moves? Luke, definitely. He was really ready to get into it. And he was kind of had his own dance move happening. And, you know, then I was kind of, I'm naturally a little more 60s. So I was trying to kind of meld with his, but he was awesome, the fact that he got into it. Eddie was singing. Would you turn your chair around for him on the voice? Yes because we'd have a secret signal and then I'd have to turn around. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. I hope you have a fantastic evening and I hope you found yourself a new team. Oh, thank you. It looks like I have, so thank you. <laughs> How did you pull all this together? It takes a team and there are about 20 or 30 people working on tonight's event. And it's really for a great cause. It's for the Collingwood Football Club Community Centre. And we're trying to raise um, money for that tonight. And we've got a big auction. And um, it's a $4 million project. So it's going to take a lot of work. And it takes a lot of people that are very passionate, not just about Collingwood, but about what the centre represents, which is a homeless centre for youth that will reach postcodes all over Victoria. And without Eloise's support, well, Victoria Park would be in ruins. And Eloise, from the bottom of our heart, we can't thank you, thank you enough for everything you've done. Eloise Weissens. Yes, a great night at the Melbourne Pavilion, uh, hosted by Alex and Eloise Weislitz. And one man that wasn't there was the captain of the Collingwood Football Club, who joins us on the club, Nick Maxwell. You're, you're actually a, a trustee for the Collingwood Foundation. Uh, I guess you could say that, yeah, I sit on the board, uh, the committee, but look, it's just all about um, the Collingwood Football Club do so much charity work and they just decided in the end we've got to bring it all together, um, have our charity arms, but also based out of Victoria Park, so there's a lot of work being done by a lot of people. Now you weren't there because you were injured and you were icing up diligently on Sunday night, so yeah. uh, tell us about the injury, how's it going? Yeah, doctor's orders, uh, so unfortunately we missed out on the party, uh, which would have been nice, but just went to kick there and uh, the, the standing leg was actually the one that just sort of got me through the groin and uh, yeah just very minor but um, did some running during the week uh, done some more running yesterday and hoping that yeah this week I'll be back and uh, hoping the black and white again hoping well, are you confident I'm very confident okay. yeah, yeah. Well, that's but, what uh, want I'm, I'm going to make sure that I, <laughs> I tick off what the doctors uh, ask and require me to do so that'll start with tomorrow's training session now I want to talk a little bit about Saturday night but also uh, other injuries Darren Jolly missed of course the game against West Coast yep. will he be OK to go? Yeah, he's 100%. Yep, he's good to go. And what about other players like uh, Andrew Cracker and others yep. that perhaps are on the cusp of, of playing senior football? Do you see any changes this week? I would say Cracks would be a really good chance. Uh, he's someone who has just worked so hard to get back from that knee injury and the last couple of weeks he's been really impressive as he builds his fitness base. So I'm not sure exactly what role he'll be playing, but yeah, he'll definitely be in the mix. And Jamie Elliott's probably the other one who, uh, who had a groin, a uh, very minor groin, and he's uh, training hard this week to try and put his hand up again to come back in. Now, you didn't travel to Perth for the game against West Coast, uh, which is a little unusual because you, you, you do normally. Yep. Of course, the injury prevented you from doing so. Where did you watch the game? What did you do? Yeah, well, I actually didn't know what to do when I found out I wasn't going. That the, uh, I guess the conditioning staff preferred that I stay behind and do a lot more work uh, with my injury. So um, I just thought maybe we'd chat to a few guys who weren't going and see if we'd get everyone together. So all the players who didn't go, uh, so those who played VFL footy on the Saturday and those who actually were injured, um, all got together Saturday night. We just had a bite to eat and watched the game together at, at Westpac Centre with the new facilities we've got there. So it was something that was... Um, I found quite enjoyable just to be around all those young boys. and What, to a quarter time? Yeah, well, I mean, even, even just to sit there and to, to get their take on everything and how it was going. Obviously, the, uh, the first quarter was the best part of the game, and um, after that we did die off as a team. But I think just talking to those guys and hearing uh, their opinions and what they were watching and what they were seeing, it, it was just good for them and to hear from them and hear what they're thinking. What was your general take on the game? Uh, I just think that at the moment we're in a position as a footy club where um, we've got some guys that are down on confidence and not playing their best and 
it's uh, not one or two guys, it's probably six or eight guys in that position and I think as a group uh, it's not going to take someone taking a big spectacular mark or kicking an amazing goal to, to get us back on the straight and narrow. It's going to take 22 guys digging in and getting their hands dirty and I guess from our perspective as leaders that's what we're looking for and uh, we understand that as a club and as a team, um, ever since I've been there, it's always been about the blue collar Collingwood Football Club and not doing the spectacular things well, but doing, uh, I guess, the team things really well. So that's going to be our selling point this week, and that's what we're going to demand of each of our teammates. And you had a detailed review yesterday? Yeah, we have a review every Monday morning or um, after every game, and um, obviously having gone through two losses and not playing the way we want to play, it, it took a little bit longer this week, but I think more than anything it was because a lot of the senior players actually wanted to have a say, so um, guys were having a good chat about where we're at and what we need to do moving forward, and as I said, about getting your hands dirty mm. and digging in. Victoria Park for the inaugural Gen for Men kickoff ahead of this Saturday night's massive clash between the Pies and the Bombers of the MCG. And I've got two of the young guns with me right now to get this uh, competition started. I've got Paul Seisman from the Mighty Pies with me. I've got Elliot Kavanagh from the Mighty Bombers with me. Boys, uh, this is simple, all right? We've got a couple of spots around the 50. We're going to go to each cone. Whoever misses first, loses. We go to the next cone. This is cutthroat, all right? I put on a magnificent day for you. It's only blowing about 80,000 kilometres an hour. <laughs> Righto boys, first kick, 30 metres out, dead in front, absolute soda. Elliot, you're the visitor, you go first, mate. Pressure's on you now. Come on, Paul. Just going to have a chat. <laughs> Alright boys, second shot, tough pocket here at Victoria Park, tough wind as well, it's got to be the right goalpost. CZ, after that putrid start, you get a chance to redeem yourself. Go son. Hello right, Elliot, time to go to a strong lead here mate. Oh that's lovely. This is getting embarrassing. <laughs> As we move over to the other pocket, the win right behind him. Score check is Kavanagh. Two straight. Seedsman. Well, you've got what I used to eat a lot of, but not anymore. You've got donuts. Come on. <laughs> this is getting ugly. Oh, can this boy kick a ball? That's three zip. A uh, 3 0 lead, you think Kavanagh's got this sorted, but this is the famous Peter Dacos pocket slotted many through here in front of the Bob Rose stand, in front of the Collingwood faithful. This is why this one's the money ball. This is why this one's worth three points. Come on, Seedsy! <laughs> That's what happens. The boy. Yeah, right here, Elliot. Good luck. Hasn't it just got interesting? Three all! <laughs> so it all comes down to this. We've had the miracle Dacos pocket. Now we have got the Derek Kickett torp from outside 50. Right, oh, no, Elliot, winner takes all. You're up. Good effort. The inaugural winner for the Gen for Men kickoff for the score of four to three. Paul Seatsman, well done, mate. Thanks, well done. Well done, well done mate. Bad luck though. Just, just like oh, the bomber season, just sort of taper <laughs> towards the end a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, mate, I promise you a big prize, isn't I? Yeah, mate. I don't want to let you down. Here it is. Oh, okay. Right up. Could have been worse, mate. Could have been last year before Gen for Men. I could have fallen on you and killed you. <laughs> right up, boys. Uh, great work from Paul Seedsman there and uh, great work from Scotty Cummings as well. Nick, it's been a great year for introducing young players. Paul Seedsman is one of them, but there's been a number, in fact seven debutants this year for the club. Yeah, I think people probably don't understand how hard it is for those kids to come in and have an impact straight away in front of quite often 70,000 people and we know that everyone's watching them and I guess all their expectations are on performing that day. So it's great to see our guys come in and, and really perform and even guys like Payne and, and Billy Elliott and those guys. So there's so many of them, as you say, and it's good for our club and our future. Absolutely, it is for the future.